Mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, friends for a life. We won't live in the past. We're making it last. It's time for another conversation. Welcome to Making It Last podcast, where it's all about helping us to have better relationships not just with ourselves, with other people. And I'm smiling because if ever I get the opportunity to travel to some of these places where my guests are, but this is my very first guest who's based in Scotland. Welcome, Dr. Libby McGugan. Is that how it's pronounced? That's correct. That's good. right. Thank you. Good, good. Welcome, uh, welcome. She's an author and she's a business coach. And what we're going to be unpacking this time is why should leaders lead from their true nature? Okay, Why? well, thank you, Noreen. First of all, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and to meet you. Um, that's a great question. Why should leaders lead from their true nature? I think we're at a point in our evolution where we have to move forward from a different place. You know, we've been living as a society pretty much in our heads in our intellects for a long, long time. And that's done a lot of good things. You know, we've created a lot of incredible technology, standard of living has changed. All of that's been great. But but the downside of that is that it creates it creates separation and isolation and, and differences between people that that um can separate people. Whereas when you move beyond your intellect mm -hmm. the, into the, the rest of you. And some people don't realize that we can do that, that mm -hmm. there's something beyond our living in our heads. But when you actually open up to living in the space that's beyond your thinking, you access what you could call as your, you could say is your true nature. And that part of you is naturally compassionate. It's naturally connected. And it's, um, it's, it's aware of the, the value of the differences between people rather than you know, seeing it as competition or um, something to be afraid of. So moving from from the space that's outside of our intellect, I think mm -hmm. brings people together and it helps bring out the best in people. Okay. I, I want you to just backtrack a little bit. You said the whole, that it, you're na that you'd be naturally compassionate and connected. Mm -hmm. Is that true right across the board though? Um, universally or... Or is it something that sometimes some people actually have to, quote unquote, train themselves to become? I would say it's innate. I, I would say that it's innate in everybody, that we all have this quality, that our, our true state, our true nature, mm -hmm. when, we're, when we are our natural selves and we're not caught in thinking, not caught in assumptions about ourselves or other people, mm -hmm. we naturally open up into this space of compassion. So I would say that that's innate. I think we do have to learn sometimes to let go of the thinking. Okay. But that's that. What when 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 that happens and people drop their personal thinking and just open up to being present, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're naturally compassionate. They naturally connect from the heart. They naturally um, see people uh, in a better light. They have more wisdom. Mm -hmm. So it's a space that is is so valuable and it has so much more in it than our personal thinking, if that makes sense. Okay. What about those leaders who will say, what you're saying then, Libby, is as if you want me to then be emotional and, and be expressive to some extent. And some leaders are trained that they should literally take their emotions out of it. Mm. So what then is your response to that? Yeah, that's a good question. It's not necessarily to say that you're emotional. Okay. You're more aware of your emotions as a guiding system, I would say. Okay. So rather than becoming uh, more emotionally expressive, you may do, but it's it's becoming aware of the fact that our, our emotions are actually here to guide us, mm. to tell us whether we're on track with our thinking or whether we're off track. And it's, it's a very simple guidance tool that we have within us. Most of us don't know about it and most of us don't practice it. But once you start to see that your feelings, your, your body is like a tuning fork and the feelings that you feel are really telling you whether your thinking is on track or off track. 
Hmm. Yeah. Because hmm. negative negative thoughts feel uncomfortable to us. And they're meant to feel uncomfortable because they're telling us something important about the fact that we're not seeing things from a perspective that's the best. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Why why do you think this is necessary though? You know, why? Because I think people as a society, like I say, we've become um we've become very aware of living in our intellect and and that can tip into living, you could say, as in our ego. Okay. Okay. So an ego driven a separate society where we you know we're kind of trying to figure things out on our own mm -hmm. but when we open up to this space beyond thinking beyond the ego beyond um the intellect it's not to say you don't use your intellect your, mm -hmm. your intellect is hugely valuable and it's still there mm -hmm. but there's something beyond that that when you open up into it you access wisdom and that is really connecting with the part of you that is connected to the natural intelligence behind life that mm. knows how that knows how to bring us solutions that knows how to bring us fresh thinking and fresh ideas that are good for us and for those around us as well yeah I'm Dr. Libby McGugan, business coach and published author, and I'm here with Noreen Daly on the Making It Last podcast. And now we are going to take a break with our partners. It is said that he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing, but when you also find a good MC, it makes her a better wedding. But as a smart man, I'd love for my wife to endorse this one. <laughs> we really did enjoy our wedding, the entire ceremony, but we especially enjoyed our reception, not because, not only because we were our own family and friends, but because our MC made it so intimate, so special for everyone. So it wasn't just about us, it was about the coming together of everyone, and that's what we wanted for our wedding. And I am not so mushy, but I felt the emotions on that day. I felt as if my mother was doing the hosting. And you know what I love the most or appreciate the most is the fact that she was calm under pressure. When I was uncertain, she was calm, collective, and reassuring. Yes. And I felt like I was in the hands of a good pilot. So all in all, we did enjoy our day, and we would recommend Miss Daly to anybody for their ceremony, their reception, whatever function, really. But for our wedding day, having her there was very special. If you have a ceremony to host, the choice is Noreen Daly. If you have sense, <laughs> then you know it's Noreen Daly because it makes sense. You can't live your best life without a healthy immune system. Boost your immune system the delicious way with Zappi's organic juices and punches. Made from local produce with zero added sugar, our juices cleanse and revitalize your body as they boost your natural immunity. Try our delicious flavors. Beat it, berry bomb, get fresh, ton up, and island splash. Find us on Instagram at Zappi's Organics or call or send a WhatsApp message at 1-876-779 eight nine one zero to order today that's one eight seven six seven seven nine eight nine one zero zappy's organic juices and punches live your best life today making it last is all i care to do you loving me i loving you Mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, friends for life. Welcome back and let's continue the conversation.
How do we get to that point, though? Because given the fact, as you keep you keep going back to the fact that how in society, you know, we, we basically govern based on our intellect to some extent. But mm -hmm. how do we then say go against that, so to speak? Because it's easier said than done. But mm -hmm. how then would you say to somebody who will listen and will watch this to say, hey, these are some of the things that you probably should consider or try doing to get to that point where you're doing that. Yeah, it's it's becoming aware of your own inner world, becoming okay. aware of your thinking, what your attention is drawn to and the kind of thoughts that you tend to um, focus on. And most of us, until you start to notice the thoughts that you're thinking, mm -hmm. they kind of you just assume that they're they're truths. You know, you make the assumption that what I'm thinking is true. And actually, it's not. Thoughts are not truth. They're not hard. They're not formed. They are just uh, bundles of mental energy. Mm. But if you give them enough attention, if you, keep, if you keep buying into particular thought patterns, they become beliefs. Yeah. And then they become hardwired in our neural circuitry. And then we start behaving in that way. We act it out. And our circumstances begin to reflect that to us. So the whole thing is connected. And when you start to see that it starts with, where am I placing my attention? What am I believing in? You know, and take it back to that point, just noticing. Mm -hmm. that, hang on. I, I just assume that this is this is a truth for me, but actually, is it? We limit ourselves by by the assumptions that we make and the the, the thoughts that we that. give our attention to. Yeah, I love that. We limit ourselves by the assumptions we make. I love that because obviously what you're then saying then is can transcend in different contexts. We're not just talking the professional context, but it can transcend across different spaces. Yes, absolutely. And I think when people do this work and they begin to notice their internal climate and their environment and what they're focusing on and become aware of when they're caught in particular thought patterns, it's not just about work. It's not just about you know, who you are at home, it's the whole thing. Because you'll begin to notice that whatever thoughts you give attention to, the most become your experience. Hmm. 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 Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm smiling because it's interesting that we should be having this conversation now because yesterday I was, I was beating my mind on something that was really getting me down and I had to just stop literally check myself and refocus so you, you're absolutely right and 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 i i yeah i i've tried that myself now with all of what you're saying though how did you get to this point in your life experience to be able to share yeah well it was a i guess a life journey really um i i was a doctor for 20 years i was an emergency medicine consultant for 10 of those um and I got more and more interested in this field because of the people I was meeting in my kind of medical working life. Okay. I met several people who had defied the odds in recovering from things that medicine couldn't cure. So that got me really interested about what it was they were doing that was different. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I stepped away from my job in 2013 and began to learn from these people, you know, what are they doing? How did they manage to thrive with a mm. condition that they couldn't cure? And, you know, completely turned things around. So I, I basically followed the breadcrumbs. I had no plan. I left okay. my job and just began to learn from these people. It got me interested in um, psychology. So I was learning from athletes and about how they approach getting in the zone for, you know, for their training and so on. And that took me into um, philosophy, psychology, physics, um, and then learning from people who had found inner peace they were they were they were living in a way that was in harmony with themselves and with people around them and it made me realize that this was a huge missing piece that I'd overlooked in my own life mm. and uh, and I think I think a lot of people do but recognizing that you have within you the ability to choose your focus where you're pl placing your focus yeah. can change your experience so yeah. yeah. Would you say you found your inner peace? 
I would say I'm way further down the track than I ever was. Yes. I'm much more peaceful now than ever. And yeah, of course, there's times, you know, I fall into thinking, I forget, like everybody. And I don't think we're going to get away from that as humans. Mm -hmm. It's part of the human condition to, to, you know, to fall in and out of thinking and to forget. But once you, the more you notice it, the easier it becomes to let go of that thinking and just open up to presence yeah. and being present. And that can transform, it can transform relationships because I've heard it said that, that being present is the biggest gift you can mm. give someone else, your presence. So you're fully with them. You're not distracted. You're not thinking about what you're going to say next. You're just present, listening, and uh, fully with them. Oh, last question. How has it transformed your own relationships? Oh, it's a different level. I mean, I'm now with uh, my partner and I are, you know, beautifully matched. I'm very happy. We're both very happy. And life just feels like it's, I feel like I'm living in flow now. I feel mm. like, and I also know that that if things are going on around me that, um, you know, things happen in life and uh, there's all, there can be a bit of chaos or disturbance or whatever. The more I tune to this space, mm -hmm. the more it kind of eases things out in my experience. So it's transformed my, my life. Thank you so much for sharing, Libby. You're so welcome. <laughs> this was Making It Last podcast, where it's all about helping us to have better relationships, not just with ourselves, but with other people. I'm Nuri Daly. Until next time. Mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, friends for life. We won't live in the past. We're making